is our first 30-minute talk for day two of the web conference by GEOCOM. Jill holds an MA, a PGCE, a BA degree, and has spent her professional life working in communications, communications through education and theater art. She's a strong advocate of the creative approaches to learning, and Jill has propagated educational drama throughout the UK and recently English the drama in Malaysia. She's a class classroom practitioner and a teacher trainer. So without any further ado, over to you, Jill. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Language Through Drama in the Primary English uh, Language Classroom. Thank you for taking your time to join me. So. Why should you spend your time listening to me? Um, as a theatre practitioner, I learned about all aspects of my craft. And I have always taught because I love to share. And uh, in 2002, I took a one-woman mask and puppet show to Japan. And a 1,000 children were crowded into the town hall in readiness. And I was preparing. And I asked myself this question, why? Am I doing this? Uh, I realized then that what I loved most about theater was the communication and transformation. And of course, that occurs in teaching. Uh, that was my last show. And since then, almost 20 years ago now, I have dedicated myself to the education of young English language learners, utilizing my knowledge of theater. I use drama in my language teaching. So, what about you? What will you learn? Uh, what educational drama is and its uses in language teaching, and some ideas, techniques, and activities which I have found useful for students aged between 7 to 10. Now, throughout my career, I have learned so much from so many wonderful teachers, colleagues, and students in the theater, in schools, and the ELT world. And I would like to dedicate this to them, because what I share with you today is only possible because of them. So now, let's get going. I would like you to think back to your childhood. What is your first memory of drama? Was drama important to your language learning? And why? Just type some comments into the, into the chat box. Kindergarten play. Interesting, Maria. An actual play. Make believe, Wendy. So play without the performance. This actually leads us to two very distinctive uh, links and differences between theatre and educational drama. Although it borrows elements of theatre, the focus of educational drama is not on the performance itself. That is not its goal. Rather, the process, the experience of working as an ensemble, working together with imagination, trust, and cooperation to create, improvise, and share with confidence something unique. Educational drama is the biz in the business of developing these soft skills, skills that our children and our grandchildren will most likely need more and more, more than others, any others, in the future world of AI. That is my strong belief. So how does educational drama work? Consider this. I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand, a Confucius saying. Is this true of you? What kind of primary learner are you? Visual, auditory, kinesthetic? Let's do a quick survey. Please type your responses in the comment box. What kind of learner, primary learner, do you think you are visual, kinesthetic? Visual, verbal, and visual. Yes, of course. Most of us are receptive in more than one way. 
and educational drama draws on all the senses and is essentially something which is done. So, how does educational drama help language development? As drama is essentially something which is done, so educational drama is task-oriented, a group activity dependent on cooperation and communication without focusing on the individual. And in this way, it helps develop language fluency. Often our shyer learner, uh, language learners enjoy group work, able to express themselves because the spotlight is not on them, similar to puppetry and mask work, I found. Um, I remember a mask workshop I was running in a primary school, and there was a child who the teachers and students had never heard expressed linguistically, uh, not in a large group context. And he volunteered to do just that from behind a mask he had made earlier that day. So sometimes we need to mask to unmask. Let's consider this. Students often do not have a real reason to speak because the tasks do not motivate them to requ or require them to say anything which they find meaningful. To break student silence, we need to engage students emotionally. Now, this means using all forms of diverse stimulus around topics of interest to students, topics they might already be emotionally invested in, such as their family festivals, folk stories, issues around friendship, superheroes, the environment, the list goes on. Find out from them what they're interested in. Once students feel they have a degree of control, as Carol was saying, they obtain a sense of autonomy and ownership. And in drama, students create stories together, whether in role play or through discussion, improvisation and reflection. And as they do so, they practice the language. If this in turn is valued, they become increasingly engaged and motivated. Drama also provides a vicarious experience that allows students to practice communicating in a safe environment. In an atmosphere of trust, students will take risks and experiment, speaking without fear of getting things wrong. A positive, inclusive and respectful learning environment is the hallmark of educational drama. The conventional drama class always begins and ends with a circle, establishing that all students are of equal importance. Finally, drama helps language development in building confidence. And I think this is probably the most important aspect. Every small success is nurtured, supported, and applauded. So, where do we start? Drama games, show and tell, grammar, language focus, theme, story, narrative, pantomime, music, picture, photo, speaking, vocal exercises, guided visualization and poetry, are just a few starting points. I often start with the theme, find a story on that theme and build from that, or the other way around. Alternatively, if you are looking for an initial stimulus or warm up for a specific lesson, there are now drama games to suit most occasions online. Let's look at uh, mm, let's look at more more about drama games. They encourage socialization, get students concentrating and focusing, listening and speaking, physically moving and becoming energized, all through having fun. Many games are readily available, as I said. Choose ones that you are comfortable with. Some of my favorites that have worked in the primary classroom and I have been using, I have to say, for, for a very long time are Zip Zap Boing. Now, this is a classic. Fun, energizing, good for group cohesion, cha challenging, and achievable. 
It incorporates words and actions for clarity and incisiveness. The speaking of onomatopoeia gets students exercising their pronunciation with an exaggerated zip, zap, boing, which of course they love. And this is a good starter for work on pronunciation and uh, tongue twisters. You can easily find out how to play. I'm not going to tell you. Help. This is another one. Um, good for starting a lesson about being stranded on a desert island, a topic which gives rise to all sorts of wonderful drama and language work. How to play. The whole class or groups imagine they are on a desert island and want to get off. A helicopter is approaching and they have one minute to spell out the word help together using their bodies. Now, this same concept can be used for letters, sounds, or any amount of words to introduce a theme. The game Opinions gets students speaking up. Love and hate cards can be placed either side of the room and students asked to take up a point on the line between the two to indicate their feelings about certain given topics. For example, shopping, buses, dancing. You could then use a pretend microphone to ask for explanations. For example, what is it that you love about dancing? To extend this further, you could add a two, two extra cards like like and dislike, uh, you could even replace the opinion cards with agree and disagree, strongly agree and strongly disagree, and introduce debate motions for students to respond to. For example, homework should be banned for primary students, always a favorite. This is a good introduction to debating skills. Let's take a look now at some uh, grammar language drama games. This can be as simple as show and tell, encouraging students to describe an object they have brought in or one they have picked out from a bag. Objects could be topic-based or random. Depending on the language level, the expected outcome for descriptions will vary. It could be the start of a lesson focusing on adjectives or a particular cross-curricular theme. In the manner of the word. Now that's a game from Noel Coward's play Hay Fever. The group sits in a circle and one person is asked to leave the room. The group decides on an adverb and the person is recalled. They have to try to guess the adverb by asking individuals to do some action in the manner of the word. For example, if the adverb was dangerously, they might ask, dance in the manner of the word. The person can have three or four goes to find the exact word. This reveals synonyms. If the individual cannot give the clue, the person guessing can ask the whole group to act in the manner of the word. Speak in the third person is adapted from one of Bertolt, Bertolt Brecht's rehearsal techniques. This can be used as a way of helping students convert direct speech into reported speech. The activity can be based on an improvisation of a very functional kind or something more imaginative and exciting like a strange sighting or event. With students playing detectives, gossips or roving reporters, they can turn what they have heard into reported third person speech. This obviously needs to be scaffolded to suit the level of the students who need to be secure in their understanding of direct speech, first of all. I think the easiest way of introducing drama is through stories. And we can bring stories to life through drama. Stories uh, are particularly helpful if you or your students are new to drama as stories are well-known territory and within the comfort zone of primary teachers and students, and besides which, there are some wonderful children's stories out there. 
So how do we bring stories to life through drama? Drama activities are good for pre-reading activities to draw children in and maximize the language learning potential of the story. In the actual reading of the story, there are, there are two drama elements at play. The teacher's language model and the dramatization of the story to further engage the children and make it comprehensible. And the post-reading activities develop upon the comprehension and other language learning targets and can be a good springboard for enriching follow-up written work. I will now take you through some drama activities I developed around an old folk tale, Monkey See, Monkey Do. Like a lot of folk tales, many different versions of this exist. Some have been found in Mali, Egypt, Sudan, India, England, and of course China. So it is easily accessible and already adapted for various different cultures and audiences. The version I have used is told by Hugh Lipton with illustrations by Sophie Fatus from the Story Tree, a Barefoot Books publication. The basic story is about uh, a hat seller who is heading to market. And on his way, his cart tips over and all the various hats get taken by the mimicking monkeys. Finally, the man outwits the monkeys and gets his hat back. Now is the interplay between the mischievous monkeys and the hat seller. This is what makes this particular folk story so good for drama. The funny phrases, the names of the different hats, are they repeated rhythmically so the students want to imitate right along with the characters. And these, with the vibrant illustrations, make it particularly good for emergent language learners. I've used this lesson with seven-year-olds, but dependent on language level, it would, of course, vary. Drama activities based on the story can start well before the children have ever clapped, even clapped eyes on the book. And a few are animal chains, which is basically introducing an animal action and sound and passing it around the circle. Um, you can ask suggestions from the children. And finally, you need to make sure that you introduce the animals from the story. And in this instance, it is the monkeys and the man. The monkeys with their actions and the man. Specifically, running hand on hip, saying stop, or any other action from the story. Next, enunciation exercises. And these will be using phrases from the story. I would explain, model, then encourage the students to join in. So let's have a go. Projection. Right. This requires us to take a deep breath to support the volume. Give me back my hat. OK, you'll go. I hear you. Next, forward placing. Refers to where the sound originates. We can extend the mmm and the mmm sound. Monkey see. Monkey do. And you should feel a tingling in your lips and tongue when you say that. The jaw. Now we're going to keep our jaws as wide as possible as we say, give me back your hats or there'll be trouble. And finally, articulation, enunciating the consonants. Billy Cox and Bonnets. Billy Cox and Bonnets. I like that. More pre-reading drama activities could be identifying pictures of hats, new vocabulary. Um, initially, I would show the hats, ideally real ones, though more likely pictures. 
and elicit teach the names of the hats and a suitable action. The hats would then be placed around the room and volunteers asked to run up when the name of the hat is called or the action is given. And when they arrive, they can repeat the name and do the corresponding action. Uh, this can increase in speed and became, become more and more game-like. The next one is mirroring in pairs. And whilst this is not language work per se, it can generate discussion afterwards about their experience, corresponding feelings, different qualities of leadership. This is where I would then read the story. Clearly, remember we are modeling the language here. We also want to bring it to life in order to engage the students. And for this, we would utilize all the elements um, that are at our fingertips. For example, volume, loud and soft, pitch, rise and fall, articulation for clarity, pace, speed, pause, tone, emotion, gesture, facial expression and eye contact, combining all to emphasize meaning, because after all, story, language is for communicating meaning. So post-reading drama activities, we could improvise the scene focusing on oral language only, or if the focus has moved on to reading, the script may be elicited from the students and written by the teacher on the whiteboard or interactive whiteboard, uh, paper, whatever's available. Then the story can be improvised. The teacher in role as the man models the words and actions, whilst the students in role as the monkeys imitate. That's at first. And then the students can take on the role of the man, first the confident ones, and then followed by the less confident. Do encourage. This is a really good lesson for students to be encouraged um, to have a go. Generally, with the repetition, they do feel confident enough to have a go, whether in pairs or with you. Discussion about feelings of the characters, the moral of the story, alternative endings, what happens next, could lead onto some very enriching language and written work. So, I know many teachers find drama challenging. Um, remember your role play experience as children that was mentioned earlier? Tap into that. And I would like to leave you with this thought. If we never take a step into the dark, we never, never see the stars. If we never try and reach for the stars, we will never know what we can achieve. And I would like to leave it there and hand it over to you for questions. Please type them in the box. Any questions? Yes, I, I do uh, teach across the age ranges, um, and sometimes that can be very, very helpful. Uh, you have a mixed ability and a mixed language group in drama uh, because it's uh, it, you don't want to have too great a span. Um, uh, but often, especially in countries and uh, where people are used to living in big families, they're very used to actually mixing around with different ages. So yes. 
in terms of someone who has never done any drama in class, uh, I would start with um, I would start with where you're comfortable with. So that's why I introduced the story element because I think story can be really uh, a comfort zone, um, and you can build up from there. You could start very simply with a very small amount, like the show and tell. That is also somewhere you could start, uh, and with the um, warm-up games, so that you could just say, okay, we're going to give over um, 10 minutes of, of each time to some activity and do little and often and build it up from there. Yes, I will. I'll, it depends. Everyone has their own challenges into Helen in terms of um, what the uh, what they they have to cover. And I know that that's something that that uh, is often spoken about. This is all very well. This is great, but we have to pass exams. We have to do this, and we have to do that. So um, in terms of yes, yeah, I think little and often is a good good way of doing it. And that's why I was trying to show some activities that were involved, some uh, grammar, grammar games as well, grammar points, because they, are, if you bring them to life uh, and it's experienced, then that can both introduce an idea more clearly for the kinesthetic learners, especially, um, and it can consolidate as well. Any more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you all for spending this time with me.